Well, this week's been all about Apple. You can't escape uh, an Apple event, unfortunately. We've got the new Apple iPhones um, coming out, the 14s. We've also got um, Apple iOS 6, 16 is being released um, just a few days after we're recording this video. Um, so we'll be talking about both of those things, as well as um, Facebook and does it actually know what data it holds? Welcome to Straight Talking Cyber. Right, so a big week for Apple, um, which has just released the, or launched the iPhone 14. So big launch, um, which was yesterday for us. Um, and it was a long launch. It was about an hour and a half. And much of it was spent talking about the Apple Watch. And actually a bit of a deal was made of the privacy of Apple Watch and the data on it and how it's protected by end-to-end -end encryption. So there were a few little swipes at Google there. And um, the iPhone itself, I must say, it looks great and I'll be upgrading soon. Um, but there wasn't much security wise to say. What does everyone else think about it? Are you gonna upgrade to the next iPhone or? Well, pre pre orders I'm, already set up for all so already for next Friday. Poiple, <laughs> poiple, poiple, poiple. Um, actually, seriously though, the, the 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 Apple Watch. I was um taken by the um changes to the temperature sensor, um, especially looking at ovulation and the likes. Um, in the context of the um Roe versus Wade being uh, done away with and the whole anti-abortion fever in certain states in the US and thinking, well, you know, how is this data going to be protected? Is it going to be completely protected at rest? Um, what apps can use that data? People are going to have to be very careful about that, aren't they? Yeah, there was a really big deal made about that, actually, which was kind of, well, people are concerned about the data of their health tracking, women especially when it's to do with ovulation, and this very, very sensitive data, which could indicate that they might be pregnant or anything else that might have happened. Um, there has been a lot of kind of top line news saying you should avoid every app that tracks this sort of thing. Um, and women have been encouraged to actually delete these apps and not use them anymore. I mean, there's always a risk at the end of the day when you're putting sensitive data into a device, whoever makes that device, to me, it felt like Apple was really capitalizing on the things that it always pushes when it's talking about data privacy and data security, which is, you know, end to end encryption, where Apple, we don't sell your data. So maybe more trustworthy, but it's best of a bad bunch with that sort of data. And I, as a woman, wouldn't be using these myself. So. What about the, uh, what about the chunky ultra watch though? How's, how does that, how does that? take your fancy but all those rugged oh, no, thanks. <laughs> activities yeah I, I mean i thought a lot about the apple launch was very much kind of like this is a great feature but how often are you going to need it it was very much about generating headlines like oh you can scuba dive with the apple watch which is cool um you can do deep sea diving um yeah cool when am i ever going to do that it, it will call emergency services if you have a serious car crash, which they hope we will never have to do. But that feature's there. It looks good on headlines. Is and it, it? And it starts at 800 pounds. Well, that's 100 good. quid. Yeah. For a lot. dollars. Tell you something, you know what? The biggest, the biggest um, factor of, of uh, sitting here in the UK of, of Apple's launch event is that the, um, uh, the kind of the dollar pound thing. Has now gone absolutely nuts. It's more yeah. it's more expensive in, in pounds because the yeah, exchange. Um, yeah, the the the. Um, it's not even parity. Parity was bad enough. Now yeah. it's like, yeah, well, you've got it's this more. two bit currency that's not worth anything. The, the fourteen pro that I've just pre put on, um, got all my pre order ready, um, is actually now more in pounds sterling than it is in dollars. It was nine hundred. Did, uh, did you go? Did you go? Nine hundred something, or it's a thousand thousand pounds. Ridiculous. You went for the, no the normal size one or the big one, and you went purple, right? Big, big, big and purple, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Well, I'm going to upgrade to the Pro, I think. I'm not going to get the um, big one this time because I did find it a bit too big, um, especially, I don't know for you guys, like putting it in your pocket. For me, it was putting it in bags if I have a small bag. Um, but if you're putting it in your pocket and you're walking about with it, it's a bit heavy, isn't it? 
it's a it's a first world problem, okay? I think it is. It is, but it's a <laughs> based problem in this case. So, got to talk about it. So, yeah, the other thing that wasn't really mentioned, other than only in passing, was iOS sixteen, and it's really exciting because that's out on the twelfth of September, so really soon. So, people who buy the new iPhones will be able to use iOS sixteen on it. Um, iOS 16 has got some really cool features. Um, again, a lot of them are kind of headlines, things that aren't already going to be used day to day, like lockdown mode, which is super, super extra security on your iPhone, but also locks down all of its features. So you can't really use it, but only good for very, very kind of high security scenarios for people who are at risk from things like spyware um, on their phones. Um, the other thing that's really interesting is pass keys, which is Apple's way of replacing the passwords. Um, that is something that hopefully is going to catch on. So we're a lot more about using biometrics now. We use Face ID, we use Touch ID, people are used to it. Um, whether Apple's going to kill the password with pass keys, we don't know, but uh, maybe. Maybe indeed. What else is going on this week? Well, let's talk about RCS, Zach. RCS, yeah. So, um, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> this is iMessage. So um, green bubbles, blue bubbles, um, Apple's iMessage not um, interoperating with, you know, kind of SMS2, if you like, which is now sitting on Android devices. So as soon as you go outside the Apple ecosystem, you lose the protection of end-to-end -end encryption, as well as the ability to do giggly little emojis and whatever else, but it actually... Um, steps out of the security enclave, which is worse. Um, this has been swirling for a year or two around why Apple won't adopt RCS and finally deal with the problem of making rich text messaging interoperate between the two big OSs. Um, there was some stuff came out as um, in the US a year ago around it was basically a sales issue. You know, iPhones are sticky across families because you can iMessage and all that. In the US, every time I'm in the States, it's really stark how many people use iMessage. Versus over here, where uh, you know, other than you know, one-time passcodes and you know, notifications and deliveries, no one texts. Certainly not, not, not in my uh, in my social circle. Um, Tim Cook was asked about um, why Apple wouldn't go RCS and gave a particularly glib and irritating answer around, you know, if you, if you want if you want kind of rich text messaging, buy your mum an iPhone, which I thought was pretty pathetic, if I'm honest. Um, you know, for a company that's all about security, to take a view that to protect its walled garden, if you like, it it won't enable any of us who are all iPhone users to securely text um, an Android user without going to a probably a Facebook owned platform, probably WhatsApp, and um, would be would be the, the kind of the default go to. Just seems to be pretty poor. So I'll uh, I'll be commenting on that through gritted teeth this weekend. <laughs> talking talking of um, security and Apple. Um, I've actually had been looking at a, um, a an interesting trend, which is the cost of zero day exploits um, on various marketplaces online. Um, um, there was one recently that was supposedly sold for eight million dollars, um, but I don't buy that one. <laughs> Literally, I didn't buy that one, but I don't I don't buy into that. I think that was a bit of a a, a fake hyped thing. Um, but there is uh, currently, I'm looking at a, a report about a, a zero day exploit for the for something that was actually fixed. The vulnerabilities were fixed in 15.6, 15.61, I think it was. Um, but somebody's come up with a new exploit to exploit these two um, vulnerabilities that were fixed. And that's on the market at the minute for two and a half million dollars. So mm -hmm. I might be taking a, a, a quick look at the cost of um, zero day exploits for the iPhone. Wow, that's super interesting. So is that the one that just got fixed where there were two vulnerabilities that could be chained together in order to put spyware on? That's the one. There, there were two zero days um, for those, um, mm. but this is a new zero day exploit. Somebody's actually come up with a new way of exploiting them. Um, but even even if you even with that new way of exploiting them, if you patched up to um, 16.1, then you're fine because it was fixed. Yeah, it's probably worth mentioning on an aside to that, we've been talking to some people online who are saying that the automatic update to iOS 15.6.1 hasn't actually arrived yet. 
um, which is not good because that's been out now and that exploit has been out for god how long um a couple of weeks yeah, this is where this is what apple completely drops the ball right and we all have it you know you you know you know something's come out a day or so before you go in and it's supposed to be an automatic update we've all got it switched on i don't understand how it's supposed to work it's never worked for me i can't remember I, if I, you know, maybe ever <clears throat> an Apple product updating automatically always waits until you do it manually. So I don't know if you're listening, but if you're listening, maybe some kind of explanation as to how it's supposed to work because it doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we were actually speaking to uh, Daniel Card, who is a security professional um, who has been testing this on all of his devices. And he literally keeps trying to download it, but it's not even installing. <laughs> and he's just waiting to see if it happens. I think one of his devices is updated now, but the other one hasn't. So it's an yeah, absolute his, joke. His, his 12 update is fine, as you'd expect automatically, but his 13 Pro hasn't at all for weeks. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. But all this says to us really is you do need to manually do the updates yourself, which we always do, but you do forget that other people don't. So it is important to do that, especially when there's a big vulnerability like this, um, which is very dangerous potentially, especially since we still don't know really who it targeted. Um, so yeah, one thing that might be worth mentioning before we end the show um, is Facebook, another company that everyone likes to talk about. Um, a while ago, um, there was a story that I wrote about uh, Facebook not knowing what it does with its data, who it shares it with, what data it has. Um, and that story has moved on um, to actually be proven through a legal challenge. Um, Facebook engineers are actually admitting that Facebook doesn't really know what it does with its data. And because of that, it's impossible for Facebook to be transparent, which is actually one of the uh, requirements under regulation, such as what we have in Europe called the uh, General Update to Data Protection Regulation. So regulatory stuff, um, yeah, it can't comply. So off you all go, Just get your pre-order set up and enjoy your new iPhone 14s. <laughs> <laughs>